What does sim racing and video production have to do with one another? Let's talk about it. Hello, my name is Matt and welcome to the channel as always. Uh, today I wanted to do a product review of the Blackmagic Design ATEM Mini Extreme ISO, a little bit of a mouthful of a name, but um, I wanted to discuss how sim racing and video production related to one another first to kind of establish a foundation before I uh, jumped right into the product review. So I want to do make note that Blackmagic Design has not sponsored this video in any way, shape, or form. However, I have been in talks with Blackmagic Design for a potential sponsorship deal in the future. If that ever comes through, I'll let you guys know. But for the purpose of this video, they have not sponsored this video. So a lot of you are probably wondering, hey, this is a sim racing channel. Why are you doing a product review of uh, a video mixer? This seems a little bit far-fetched. And to be honest, a little bit is, but to be frank, when it comes to sim racing, a video production is very closely related. In 2020, everybody was sent home and to be in lockdown, a lot of people started going into sim racing, and that would even be the race car drivers themselves. So rather than having these absolutely giant studios that would be able to record uh, all these, the cars going around the racetracks and whatnot, what started to happen is that the race car drivers, much like people like Jimmy Brabant had been doing for years, where they said, hey, I'm a driver, I have a computer or a video game console, and I've got a webcam. And that right there is the basis of the video production side of it, is more for content creators. Yes, uh, normal sim racers who do it more as a hobby can get a little bit involved with the video production, but a lot of it comes with content creators themselves getting involved with, you know, kind of like myself, being able to record gameplays or being able to stream uh, various races. And we need, you know, technology to do that, i.e. video production equipment. So that's where the Blackmagic Design A10 Mini Extreme ISO comes in hand, or comes into play. So with the setup that I've currently got here, I've got three different computers, um, my personal rig, a guest rig, and my significant other's uh, computer, as well as I wanted to have camcorders or face cams for all three computers, which I only have two camcorders, one for being the guest rig setup, and then one for being, ironically, the foot cam, so I've got two computers without those. So those will come in time. But already, that's going to be seven perspectives. So naturally, with using my 2020 uh, tax return money, I actually got an A10 Mini ISO, Extreme ISO, and it's the first time where I didn't cheap out on something, and I didn't regret spending the extra money. It's looking back, if I'd gotten the A10 uh, Mini ISO, I would have been missing out on like a couple of computers or a couple of webcams. I would have been missing out on um, the capabilities of being able to record to a computer or live stream to a computer. Again, still haven't used it, but I still want to. And then especially like the uh, headphone output. So all of that being said, let me talk about the product itself. So with the ATEM Mini Extreme ISO, uh, as I was discussing before, there is a singular 3.5 millimeter headphone output. There are two 3.5 millimeter microphone ins. There are eight HDMI inputs, two HDMI outputs, two USB-C outputs, and your power in cable. So that being said to begin with, that is a astounding amount of capabilities of being able to have a bunch of different uh, camera angles that you'd be able to um, switch on the fly with. I wouldn't call them satisfying buttons, but they, they are quite nice. Uh, I personally w almost wanted like a more um, rigid plastic with a more satisfying click, but I think honestly for what the job does, for what the device does, the job is fulfilled perfectly because it like doesn't make any noise. So if you have any, um, you know, microphones that you're recording that are like condenser microphones that just picks up a lot of excess noise, having these buttons that basically don't make any noise, just like a little thump, 
is actually quite nice uh, in retrospect. So I'm glad that I, I've changed my perspective on that since then. But with each HDMI in, there are 13 buttons per perspective. So you've got six of them, which would be for specifically the audio side of things where you can either turn it on or turn it off. And when it's turned on, it will always be recording or always playing that sound in the live stream, but it has no effect on the individual recording of the ISO file, fortunately. Uh, you can also turn on audio follow video, which would mean that when you change perspectives, um, what will happen is that the audio from the cameras will then change out to whatever perspective you're using. So if you've got music on perspective eight, and then you want to change to um, the microphone to your webcam, and the webcam is you know the, the narration that you want, you can change to um, perspective six, and the music will kind of fade out, you know, depending on uh, the duration of the cut that you, ha you have. And we'll talk about those in a bit as well. So the other thing that I found was quite interesting was that each of the HDMI inputs has an additional six buttons for gain, focus, black or shut, as well as increase or decreasing whatever the option is at that time for specifically black magic cameras. So if you can imagine having eight black magic cameras that can adjust both the gain and the focus, I think the black point, or you can, I, I don't know much about those buttons because I personally haven't played with them, but being able to change cameras on the fly from the video mixer itself, already this product should have been more than three thousand dollars if you were any other competitor this would have been probably close to the five thousand dollar range and yet black magic decided hey you know let's sell it for what thirteen hundred dollars us so then along the top row of the um video mixer is that there are a lot of different buttons again a lot of which i personally haven't played with and i can't really discuss much about them but the ones that i've personally used is dve I don't remember what the acronym means offhand, but it does enable picture in picture mode. So the cool thing about it is that uh, you can choose, you know, along the top, it'll state, you know, inputs one through eight, and you can, with picture in picture, essentially make a face cam if you are like a gamer. So for me, my personal computer is on input six, and then I will actually turn on the picture in picture, go into the top right, or top left and whatnot, and then choose, you know, perspective three on the top. And on, in red, it'll tell you that it is on air, that is recording, that is currently, um, you know, being used. And that's how I've normally gotten my previous uh, picture in picture perspectives. But the cool thing is that there's also a thing called Super Source that they've uh, included. Now, with Super Source, what you can do is with their uh, program that you can download on you know from their website is in the program you can actually adjust uh, you can add more uh, different options for like picture in picture uh, things of that kind of nature so what I did is I actually made a macro for both you know perspective you know, like my computer with face cam my significant other's computer with face cam the guest rig with face cam and then macro 4 is my computer with face cam plus perspective five, which is the foot cam. And that's normally how I've been able to achieve the, um, both like the, the video game, you know, the face cam and the foot cam is because you can actually adjust that in the program itself. Probably the one downside that I do have about the device is, uh, is something that everybody else has also been discussing as well, is that the power in, First of all, I, I do like the idea that you have to screw in the power cable all the way so you're not you know in the middle of a giant recording session and somebody trips over the power cable and the entire thing goes dead. Uh, you actually have to, with intent, unscrew it and then unplug it. But the only issue that I've had is that there isn't like an on off switch. And I wonder if that's also due to the same reason is somebody accidentally just turning the system off uh, in the middle of the production. 
Um, so how I've been able to avoid that is I've actually got a USB, well, excuse me, a Wi-Fi outlet device where in one of my apps I can actually turn on the Wi-Fi outlet on or off. And that essentially makes for a little bit of a better on-off switch for me. It's still a lot of other people I know will have to physically unplug and plug back in their unit. And that's what I had to do for a lot of the time when I first started using it. But um, having that uh, Wi-Fi outlet since then has been so much better for being able to uh, turn things on and off and, and not have to worry about uh, accidentally, you know, turning something off or unplugging it or hitting a switch by accident. So some other features that are on the um, mixer that I personally haven't used because I haven't done a whole lot of live streaming with it yet, but it is very nice to have uh, for that feature. So as we discussed, you know, there are these six macro buttons that you can program in their software to be able to change, um, you know, what perspectives are on at a certain time without having to hit everything to like get everything set up, i.e. like setting, like hitting my uh, personal computer cam, then adding the um, what uh, the picture in picture and then getting the placement right and then going over to the next computer, having to turn on the same thing and then go to, you know, I don't know, perspective two, which isn't plugged in. But uh, apart from the macros, then the bottom right of the mixer has a lot of buttons in regards to transitions. So for instance, I do, I normally just leave it alone at, you know, um, the cut, so just as soon as I hit a button, I'll cut to that perspective. Uh, but you can also do auto or the fade to black, and then you can also include like the duration of what that transition is. So I believe auto is in regards to being able to use the different transitional effects, where you can have like the swipe up, or the um, side swipes, or the um, going into a circle, or going out of the circle, or um, kind of like these odd diagonal uh, transition effects. Kind of really spices up the live stream if you're like a viewer. It, it makes things a little bit more interesting versus just a hard cut, which again, I personally wouldn't use it, but again, it's a great feature for those who may. And then finally up in the uh, top right is the uh, record button, the stop record button, and then actually the live stream button. So the other thing that I did forget is that this device also has a ethernet out port. So you can connect it directly to your, um, you know, for your router or your modem. And one of the other cool things that they have discussed is you can tether the unit. I want to say it was over USB-C to a phone. So for instance, if the internet goes out, you can actually live stream from the phone using the phone like a hotspot. I, I can't remember how all that worked, but it is a really cool feature from what I uh, recall how that worked. But part of the buttons on the top is that with the live stream button is once you get all of your stream keys in order, part of the program, you can actually live stream directly from the device. Like you can set it up with a computer, unplug the computer, and then that's it. You know, you'll just hit, uh, you know, on air and it'll go out to your uh, audience. And of course, uh, the other thing too is with the two uh, HDMI outputs, I personally have, um, I wanted to be, I for a while had the guest rig monitor set up as uh, the output one, which I've normally been like the program out what, you know, the audience would see. And then on the second one, I've had um, just kind of like the shows all the individual perspectives. It shows uh, how much uh, time left is recording. It'll show a lot of other different things as well that you can play around with in, again, the uh, Blackmagic Design software. But yeah, currently I've set up actually like a small monitor to be able to see all the um, program outs and all the different perspectives and whatnot uh, on a smaller screen and keeping just the big monitor on the left for the program out and then like the monitor on the right can just be for the guest rig so you don't have to worry about all that kind of mess. So that was the general overview of the product. So as far as the actual review goes, um, I've been using it probably close to about 10 months, clo maybe closer to almost about a year. I've loved it. There is, it has worked every time without an issue 
One of the things that I've absolutely loved about this device is that not only is it a dedicated uh, video recorder, it also uh, records audio. So what I've done is I've got, even though I could plug in a mic directly into the video mixer and then I'll record you know, that narration and be good to go, I've got a dedicated audio recorder, uh, the Zoom H6, which I could also do a review of that in the future. I've absolutely loved that as well. It's been great. It's been compact. It also records all the audio uh, individually, but I'll take the output of that and plug it into the mic input so I can personally hear my audio and multiple other people's audio if, for instance, that they're, you know, over. We did a, you know, for the extraneous zone, uh, myself and Eric actually did a 11-hour um, recording of Civilization V over two different days. And each day, it went for more than six hours, and there was not a singular issue. Like, it just recorded both the audio and the video and no frames were dropped no issues and i am still to this day i am astounded about that because it is recording 1080p 60 frames a second and i want to say a bit rate of like 80 which is probably more than double what any of the footage can or any of the cameras can well any of my perspectives can actually handle but if I do actually get like a Blackmagic design camera that can, you know, handle a huge amount of bitrate, it'll be really worthwhile. So I want to say that maybe a couple other people might have noticed too that the difference between the original uh, ATEM minis and the extreme varieties of the uh, devices, because there is so much going on at the same time, they actually did have to include fans to be able to dissipate the amount of heat that the units are producing. Now, on startup, you hear them booting up, but during the recording, I haven't noticed it because honestly, the computers around me are much louder. And if you are in any type of studio environment using this, like, you're not going to hear it. I mean, it produces a tiny, 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 tiny hum, but most AC units or heater units are going to be loud enough that it will cover or mask that sound. So really it's, it's, I have no complaints with it apart from that on off switch, which again, I found effects for. It is such a high quality unit that has so many different options uh, that it, uh, I, I can't even speak. I'm speechless about how <laughs> it's such a cool device. So yeah, pretty much every one of my videos, probably since uh, May 2021, from the extraneous zone up through uh, my personal channel up to the current day, I record my videos by using the device. And in post, I'll take all the individual files that it produces, I'll compile them together, and that's it. So all of that being said, um, would I recommend this product? Abso-freaking-lutely. If you have the money and you have the use case for an 8 HDMI input video mixer, it is the best thing that I've ever, like it is probably the best $1,300 that I've ever spent on anything, bar the my first pre-built computer. So of course, the <laughs> most people who are sim racers who just do sim racing, and that's it. They're not content creators. They're not anything of that kind of nature. This, this is definitely not for you. But for those who are into sim racing that have multiple perspectives that they want to be recording and live streaming simultaneously, there is not a better product out there. If you're a sim racer who has just a computer and wants to have a uh, camcorder and a foot cam and maybe have an additional um, uh, HDMI open for either like a video game console or for like a roaming camera that you can just pick up a camcorder and just record whatever's going on in the room, I would probably go more towards the ATEM Mini ISO because what you can do is, even though that it doesn't have the headphone out, 
you would be able to use the HDMI out and plug in headphones to an external um, monitor. So most seven inch monitors will have like a headphone output. And that's what I believe I would probably recommend with doing that. Of course, you would be able to have your own uh, microphone go straight into the device. So you probably wouldn't need your own, like a dedicated audio recorder. And uh, again, having like an additional seven inch monitor, you could even go as far as getting the Blackmagic Design Video Assist, which would be a little bit overkill, but that as well also has a headphone output. So that being said, uh, of course, Blackmagic Design, thank you for creating such an incredible product. Um, going back even if I would be able to describe to myself five years ago what I would get in that future time frame of this is what is capable in 2022 I would have been so astounded like first of all why would I need that and second of all and for that cheap and the fact here that I have a use case that is able to use it maybe not to its fullest potential but to use even like 50% of it and still have so much more that I can do with it, so much more to learn. I haven't even discussed the the fact that you can have virtual like uh, environments where you can set up green screens in and be able to set up like uh, virtual studios in the software. So you can have roaming cameras that, that see the environment change in, and it's just, I can't even describe it because I'm <laughs> my brain is too small to understand it. I'm just a sim racer who understands basic video production. It's like, oh, so yeah, this this device, the A10 Mini uh, Extreme ISO is such a powerful device and has so many different features that it would take years to be able to fully understand them and utilize and it's just awesome. It really is. So again, Blackmagic Design, thank you so much for creating such an awesome device. Um, hasn't had an issue yet, and I will be, I will continue to be using it for a long time coming. So thank you for watching this review of Blackmagic Design's A10 Mini Extreme ISO. If you like this content, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Normally I will be posting sim racing content, but I will throw in the occasional product review. It will most likely be in regards to video production, audio production. Every now and again, it'll be in regards to sim racing itself. So stay tuned for all of that. So again, thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys have a great great day. So again, thanks so much. Take care. Bye.